This is the peristernal long axis view. And I think image quality is actually terrific in him. Of course, in many patients, you will not get such good image quality. A little trick you can use is, first of all, try to stay as close as possible to the sternum. And second, move the transducer down one intercostal space. Sometimes you will get better image quality there. And can you still get an apical view? Yes, you can also get an apical view. The problem here you have is the lung, because the lung is on the lateral side interfering with your image. And if the patient is lying on his back, the heart might be at least partially hidden behind the lung. But to avoid this problem, the trick that I usually use is I try to image from a little bit more medial. In other words, closer to the sternum. Yes, so, actually from here we can get whatever we need about left ventricle. We can also see the valves, so more yeah. information. Yes, I think this is all you need, right, Anna? I mean, you can assess left ventricle function. You can see the thickness of the septum. You can even look at right ventricle function and the valves. Now, this is all you need in critical care patients. You know, in him, I can show you can even get a completely normal four-chamber view, um, almost get a four, normal four-chamber view if you're kind of on the rib. But just for demo purposes, in most patients, you will have to uh, kind of be happy if you get something like that. But I think the main teaching point here is, yes, it is possible to image patients even if they're laying on their back. And the second teaching point I want to make as a final closing remark is, it's even possible to position patients on intensive care units if we only try a little bit. And that might help too.